Hey, this is Illy Vish from Spiritual Gangster Certified. And if you haven't heard about Anchor and the fact that it's the easiest way to record a podcast, let me put you on. First of all, it's free. And we know we can't get any better than free. And it has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or from your computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you don't have to do any extra footwork. They'll send it over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more podcast platforms. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, so tell me where you're going to find that. (laughs) Can't find it anywhere else. So it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. You want to make sure that if you want to start a podcast that you go get the free Anchor app at anchor.fm to get started. another episode of Spiritual Gangster Certified. I'm your host, Illy Vish, or Janae. Don't mind what you call me. Just don't call me late for astrology or spiritual shit or blunt. Yes, we keeps it real on here. I am so excited because I have the amazing, the gorgeous, the inspirational Serene Kincaid joining me today for a chat and chill. Hello. (laughs) I have to tell everybody that encountering you on Facebook was a blessing, like beyond a blessing. A lot of people will be like, oh, y'all don't be knowing the people that you actually like, you know, interact with on Facebook in real life. I'm like, that does not matter when gifts such as you come our (laughs) way. It don't, it don't. The heart, the soul, the spirit, everything is on point. There's like a 100% integration of all the things, all the things, not just the love and the light, but all the things. And that's what you bring forth. I want everybody to pay special attention to this young lady today. She's life changing. Thank you so much. No problem. And I hope you don't mind like random questions here or there. We are dealing of course with the year 2020 that everybody thinks magically you know, on December 31st, they are going to go to sleep and then wake up the next day. And oh my God, 2020 is going to be over. (laughs) Ma'am. Thoughts on that? Well, my my whole thing is everybody started the year 2020, you know, new vision, blah, blah, blah. Did you think you were going to like everything that was revealed? Like, you you wanted to see clearly. Yeah. You're seeing clearly everything isn't going to be beautiful. Like when you, when you, there's some people, when you put them glasses on, you like, eh, like, <laughs> like, that's what you look like. Like all the, like, so it's just like that. Like when we put on the glasses, when we take off the rose colored glasses, it's like that clown mirror where you like, oh, I look good as fuck mm-hmm. in this mirror. But then you go to the other one, you be like, you know, so it's it's a it's a perspective thing, and this year could have been a good year, because and it's all based on perspective. I agree. Like anything happening, like I could see a car accident and somebody could say, "Damn, that's a fucked up ass car accident." They fucked their cars totally up. I could cross the same accident and be like, "I am so glad nobody in the car got hurt." Yeah. Like, same accident, different perspectives. So, like, if we're like, oh, everything is shitty, it could be our perspective. And um, to not take on that collective energy, too. Because some people just walking around here so fully open and unprotected yeah. that they don't even really realize why they feel like shit. Indeed, so. indeed. Not protecting oneself, taking on the energy of everybody else, especially in 
I keep saying this phrase that we keep hearing, these uncertain times. And I think to myself when I hear that, okay, I mean, I guess I understand why they say that, but this has been a year of certainty for me. Yep. It has been. Like, it's the 2020 thing. You see clear. You just don't like what you see. And, and, and that's okay. But there's a chance to move in alignment as well. Um, when most people come for me to me for a read, it's not that they don't know. They want me to say something different than what they know mm. already to be true. And I'm like, no, like you know exactly what you've been told to do. You just don't want to do it because you don't know the next step. And they're not asking the next step. They're asking you to just be obedient and move without knowing. And that's scary as fuck. I think it's scary as fuck too. Especially if you know someone is feeling, they already have a sense of the truth, but what they want you to do is delude them. And it's like, you don't operate from delusion. So that's that, that ain't happening. Uh, so this is what I tell people. I will never give you a fear-based reading, ever. Um, I will always keep it 100 with you. I always give you tools to navigate whatever is coming up. So it's not like, oh, this man is, you need to leave him, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you know, you already know. Start mm. getting your ducks in a row. Start getting this in order. Start doing blah, blah, blah. And you know you need to leave him. And so it's a lot of coaching people into what they already made up in their minds that they need to do. Mm-hmm. And just, they just need an out, they need an outward propulsion versus that inward motivation. They need somebody else to be like, girl, <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, why are we here? Right. How would you, to people who are just becoming familiar to you, how would you describe the readings and the work that you do? My readings are very homegirl. Like, um, it's very down to earth and straight to the point. I don't do a lot of fluff language. You're not going to hear me speak in poetic prose unless that's how your guides are speaking and that's what I hear. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's really down to earth like you just talking to me. You called me up as your homegirl, said, you know, about this situation and. I'm your home girl giving you guidance. So I always tell people, I'm your home girl with psychic insight. I had a client that was calling me about some. I'd be like, girl, the guy, girl, why? Why are we crying? Why are we getting dehydrated over this? You know, that kind of thing. Like, so if you're not ready for realness, I won't say raw because I'm not mean. I'm not nasty. I'm not into right. that. Um, but I will tell you the truth. I will get you together. I will tell you when you've been lacking in everything, you know? Um, so yeah, it, that's, that's what I would say. Um, a little bit lighthearted as well. I just, okay. I had a couple jokes. <laughs> you so, got jokes. I've definitely seen your jokes. <laughs> so don't always take me like totally legit, serious all the time. I'm not that super serious. Um, Again, your homegirl, casual, a little goofy, you know, a little ADD, but real. You you love her anyway. She's weird, but you love her. <laughs> and that's me. <laughs> that's, I have to 100% agree with you there. <laughs> Definitely. She's weird, but you love her anyway. Like, <laughs> can't nobody talk bad about it either. Like, so. Listen, I mean, we see a lot of people online that speak spirituality and stuff, and some of them are very stuffy about the journey. Right. To the point where it's like, are y'all even enjoying your journey? No, they're not. They're not. And I can tell because many are my clients. (laughs) Ah. You're like, this is not, you're, you're, you're not even invested in the enjoyment and the fulfillment of this path how do we tell other people anything about that you know and it's really because they're showing up in what they think people want from them Mm. and i really don't give a fuck (laughs) 
okay. Like I do and I don't. Right. <laughs> right. So it's a balance. My, yes. And so my internal motivation isn't what other people want from me. Now I might care if they like it when I present it, you know, but my internal motivation isn't I think people want me to do this or um spiritual people do this. I told people many a time, I'm not fucking vegan. Leave me the fuck. Every time I go to a spiritual event, they want to, like, everything's fucking vegan. My assistant always leaves to give me a fucking cheeseburger. I need grounding out this bitch. What are y'all doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm grounded. I'm going to sit here and do vegans for eight hours, and you're going to feed me some fucking uh, pasta? No. I need a hamburger. Like, <laughs> so that is me. And I no. this is fucking unapologetically, and that's what people need to do. Be unapologetic in how you express who you are. Because the thing is, people can only love what you present. So if you're mad at people only loving who you're not, then stop presenting that to them. Amen. Like, like if they didn't know that you could be this way, they wouldn't be like, most of the people around you wouldn't be asking for it. Granted, there are going to be people that would be like, oh, you should, you should. And just so that you know, the sound went down some. I don't know what happened. I was just checking. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you better now. It was like... it. it, Somebody it must have, like, emailed me or something like that. Oh, okay. I can still hear you. It's just not at the level as before, but we could try to fix that. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. And so... Um, I forgot where I was. <laughs> you were talking about, like, look, I need some meat. Yeah. Yeah. So be unapologetic in how you show what, regardless of the spaces. And um, the reason why a lot of you, or people, period, myself at one point in time, was uh, stagnated is because we're not fully embodying who we're fucking meant to be. You wonder why you can't get what God has for you. And it's because you haven't embodied what God made you. To mm. be. You're scared of saying, this is me. You're scared of, and you're denying parts of your wholeness. And so your fulfillment and your joy is in your wholeness. And if you're denying parts of yourself, then you are not whole and you are not welcome to everything that your wholeness is your capacity can bring you. Yes. Like, you know, so you're scared to come out of the witch closet. You're scared to say no. You, you're scared to say you don't want monogamy. You know, all these things. And so you're living the lie that your subconscious stories have told you. I say our soul will always validate what we think to be true. Hmm. So, like, if you're saying I can't get a man if I don't, guess what? You ain't because you, you're gonna attract all the men that want that, you know. And so your story will validate that experience. And so now you admit that now you can guess you gotta be the main this and this and da 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 because that's you presented that to them. Right. They like that shit. If it never was presented, it would have never got to that point because the people that want that would wouldn't continue on with you. And so it's us and our beliefs that get us where we are. And it all leads back to authenticity and integration of our wholeness. He made you wear for a fucking reason. Why would he give it to you and then be like, but don't use it? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make he sense. He's a sci fi geek for a reason, but don't use it. Don't show nobody. Don't yeah, show nobody you like that. Yeah. Oh. I well, totally we need, agree. It's well, we need them nerds to be getting it. Mm. <laughs> get you a hey now. <laughs> they really do need to get them a gamer. One will go hygiene, so that might be a you know. But get you a gamer. They'll they'll throw that back up a little bit. Y'all heard it here. Yeah, they will. Am I lying? <laughs> oh, oh ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. You are not. <laughs> <laughs> And what you said to like going back to the vegan thing, which kind of, I had like three thoughts while you were saying that I was like, Oh, I got to touch on this. Mm -hmm. There are people that are like, well, you know, you're not spiritual if you're not vegan. And it's like, first of all, 
people with their ideals about how everybody is supposed to be is in denial of the very good truth that you just spoke on that you are made a certain way. You know, we, we have certain energies about ourselves for a reason. They're not all the same. So why would people expect, oh, okay, you, you had the spiritual event, you don't want a cheeseburger. And it's like, what? Or you expect me not to. And a lot of people not to make waves. And I understand people don't want to make waves. They might just politely eat their vegan whatever and didn't show up as themselves. Right. Such a small thing to do in a situation like that may seem like nerve wracking to a person when they are not standing in their full self-expression, you know? Exactly. How do we pull people out of that, though? You have to not give a fuck. Hmm. And it's as simple as that. Like, you're going to really sit here and tell me that I can't eat what I need to eat? For me, I have seizures. So being vegan is, like, it's super hard to be a vegan with somebody that needs a high protein, high fat, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's easier for me to just be able to eat a fucking burger or steak. Yeah. Right? And... A lot of people who are spiritual aren't channels. They're not, you know, I'm a a channel. I'm a vessel. I walk around with spirit 24-7. The sheer energy I possess causes me to have seizures because the body is just not meant to possess this type of electric energy. Right. Short circuit sometimes. I am not going to risk my body and my my quality of life to try to appease you by not eating meat. Because I joined spirituality for my freedom of expression. Yes, ma'am. For my freedom of how I choose to praise who I choose to praise. So why would I then change from one dogma to another with a whole list of other fucking rules? Listen. I tell people, I don't subscribe to that. You do you, I do me. <laughs> <laughs> and some people get so offended by that that it's just like I know you ha- you already are of the nature where that does not really bother you at all. Mm-hmm. What I find though is they don't like any sort of comeback to that because here's the thing: a lot of them will say, "Well, your preference, you know, shouldn't be over an animal's right." First of all, and I say this to people all the time: sacrifices are made in a lot of different ways, in every area of life. But do you respect the sacrifice? I respect my food. I don't, I try not to waste food. You know what I mean? If the animal had to die for me to consume it, I appreciate that. That's an exchange of energy as well too. And they'll be like, oh, do you, I mean, just because you choose to only eat plants, do you respect them? Do you waste? Like, I think it's a lot deeper than they make it. They try to, and this isn't everybody that's vegan, so I hope nobody feels attacked. Those who feel attacked, though, there's a reason why. But, you know, I I really think people don't see the different layers and levels that there are to things. You have a respect for your body and the nourishment of your body, and therefore I think that brings about it that you also have a respect for the food. So nobody should be coming at me about my food. Worry about your own food. But also, like, even in the veganism, the increase in vegan options of, like, clothing and all of that, that's yeah. not the plastic. It goes right into the landfill and does it. So mm-hmm. we're, you're still affecting, like, the environment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, the desecration of all the palm for the palm oil and all that and getting rid of rainforests and like they like you're des the where humans are decimating the environment, period. Whether you're vegan, whether you're non vegan, whatever, our share existence in it. Because now everybody's going that way. We're using resources we didn't have to tap into before mm-hmm. and now we are. And now how much plastic is in the landfills because those patent leather purses and those full leather use and all that, that's all plastic. That doesn't degrade into the earth. And you're buying all this fast fashion and all this other stuff and it literally just goes and sits in a pile. So, I mean, you know, 
I say to each its own in that respect. And I had someone that didn't believe me, right? What do you um, mean? Like, she didn't believe what you just said was had any truth to it? Yeah, so like, I, I would tell her, um, I'm a channel. I channel all day, 24-7. Um, spiritualness. I told her to her face, I, I'm not going vegan, I'm not going fruitarian, I'm not doing any of that because I already vibrate so high that when I eat that pureness, the clearness of the food, I am of no earthly good anymore because I'm too high vibrational, which okay. would, so which then becomes um, I can't walk, I can't talk. Um, I have speech issues, I, you know, all these other things. And I was like, that's not an existence that I fucking want to live. <laughs> like, I don't want to live that existence. So I hear you. I will eat food to bring down my vibration a bit that I can think, I can function, that I can exist in this world. And everybody's diet is different. Yes. And everybody's body needs something different and reacts differently. Especially when you're an energetic being, yes, ma'am. Body and, and like, there's just weirdness that I could break out in highs for a spiritual reason. Go to the doctors; they will find no fucking reason for my highs. I had highs for two weeks. Couldn't figure it out, Whoa. and then it just goes away. So spiritualness and all this it metaphysics it makes no sense and so you they always try to make the irrational rational right and that's where we kind of like not, none of this shit is rational plus it's all a fucking illusion anyway right but that's another it, <laughs> it definitely is I, I know it's one people need to hear though but you're right because <laughs> yeah, i've been seeing the glitches lately um because god made me a coder and that's what I did before I did all the spiritual stuff. So I'll be driving. I'll be like, that car is not supposed to be there. Right? And it's just this weird thing. So I try to stay in the house a little bit more because lately we're, we're glitching like shit. And I'm like, okay. Wow. Ricky Ralph. I feel like uh, the chick in Ricky Ralph where her name was Glitch. It might have been. And so, yeah, that's how I feel. Like everything around me is glitchy. But okay. Can you give us an idea for like when you first got in tune, you know, with your channeling gift? Okay. So I often joke that um, I'm not crazy because my mom had me tested, which mm. is literally the truth. Um, <laughs> at eight or nine, I told my mom I heard voices. She had me tested for schizophrenia. They told her I just have an active imagination. Mm. And so I started uh, pushing it to the back because the voices never stopped. They were like constant. Um, so I, at eight or nine, I used to sleep with headphones on, playing music to kind of drown out all the other stuff or give yeah. my words something else to fixate on instead of my in, the internal ramblings that I kept hearing. And um, so soon enough, they quieted it down. I won't say they were gone because as you know, I'm looking back, they were still there. I just mm -hmm. thought they were my voices, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at that point. So um, then I got pregnant. Okay. And um, something pushed me into doing hypnosis for childbirth. So I did hypno babies for childbirth, for painless childbirth. And, you know, that started the whole rabble hole of spirituality. Um, because it's, it's pretty much meditation, you know, self-hypnosis, meditation, and things like that. And okay. I started um, expanding and talking to other psychic people, um, trying to get advice. And then one of them was like, why are you coming to me? You are a medium. And I was like, um, that ain't me. That's not who I am. And they were like, um, you're a medium. And she goes, first of all, do you hear anything in third person? I was like, everybody has voices. She goes, are the voices in third person? Like, Ty, you know, you, sh you should slow down. Ty, you know, you need to do. And I'm like, yeah. She goes, those aren't 
a typical internal rambling. Your internal rambling will go, I need to do, or, you know, continue. Right. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And so I started working with someone to tap into it because I'm very analytical. So I didn't want to broach on anything um, and fuck anything up. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, it's, it's a space that it shouldn't be trifled with, right? right? Um, so I went under the tutelage of someone and she taught me how to like tap in, um, to go internal and get this more amplified, um, because I, I mostly hear, um, that's why I can't really see because all, all, all the power goes to my ears. I'm uh -huh. not the shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, and that's how I got into it. I would say that, um, to really get what someone where that is what they do, really get with someone where that is what they do and get them to like, get a teacher, get a mentor. Because mm. um, we, we try to do this alone. And we're probably creating more hassle than anything. I can see that. Pay somebody to be a mentor so that you can be guided correctly. Um, there are people who blaze the path well before us. Um, and I pay to not have to hit the landmines. They hit, like, if they're going to give me a map to where all the landmines are and tell me not to do that, I want that book. <laughs> right. That was a session. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> that was a session. I don't because your spirit is something not to be played with. Yes. And messed with so frivolously, and so that so that's all I would say is to make sure that you're doing it. Um, I want to say in decency and in order, but not in like oh do it this specific way. Make sure that you're not creating more issues for yourself than what it is you're trying to create. Right. And you're okay. with there your coach you or with your help or anyone else's help, it's like right. there's a sounding board. There's there's not just my internal chatter that can because you know people's internal chatter is it's exponentially chaotic depending on, you know, what the thought processes and reactions to life are. So it's a lot. It is, but it's something as simple as knowing to make sure you do a divination before you ever hex anybody. Hmm. Right? Some people don't, they just go straight to hexing people and it's like, well, did you even divine whether or not you should be a, you should do that? Nah, then, then you're wondering why um, your life is a fucking mess. Yeah. You know, I had a client. She was like, I want to do this. I said, baby, don't do that. That's going to backfire on you. She's like, I, I just think, I said, you you paid me for my advice. Right. <laughs> I, I walk both sides of the plane. I'm saying, don't do that, baby. That's going to backfire. And sure the fuck it did. And she lost mm -hmm. everything. And she ended up getting arrested instead of the person she was trying to do whatever on. And I told her, like, just because you have the capability don't mean you should. And there, people think there aren't any ethics within spirituality. Right. But the physics has lessons. Physics yes. has ethics. And all of this, even, the, even if it's just energy, there are still ethics in energy. Yes. Um, and so you can't just do what the fuck you want to do. Um, and so having someone to act as that clear channel, I say clear because everybody ain't got it in there for you. So I say act as a clear channel um, of ethics for you in your journey and align with someone who feels good energetically. Because there are people I don't vibe with and I refuse to work with. I don't care how popular they are. I hear you. Because I can, I can, I can see different. <laughs> I 
I, I'm like shallow how I see the difference. <laughs> I, I feel see, you. I see it from the inside. Right, so, right. And that's what counts. And you're right. Everybody's not doing that, which makes it because we're coming up upon times where it's going to be a hell of a lot more popular for spirituality to just be dispersed in places it hasn't before. And it's not like I'm saying there aren't people starting out new who are really in tune and clear, as you say, but it's become a situation where people are trying to make money and flood into things, but it, it backfires on the people who are using their gifts and therefore should be compensated for it. Cause people have a problem with that too. And I'm sorry. Nah, nah, at all nah. in the world. <laughs> All the laws in the world. So no. I will like I, I know what I give, you know what you give. There's an exchange. There's an exchange even of in us giving our attention to something. So like if I am using my energy to benefit you, that shouldn't be a question. But there's a lot of people coming in messing it up because they just see the money opportunity but don't have the skills. I was talking to one of my friends and she said she some one of her friends had suggested a person that she mm -hmm. like follow and look into. And she said, I'm, I'm looking and looking and she's saying she's an expert on this. She's an expert on that. And then come to find out one of the things she said she was an expert in, she just started taking a course for it six months ago. Now you, you, you want the six figure income from your spiritual business for six months of work into something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and the thing of it is, um, there are people who are naturals. Mm -hmm. Like me, I, like for me, I'm natural, but I also worked under someone to be able to like focus the energy. Right. Um, and I believe people there are some there's someone for everybody um that gabby bernstein level of spirituality people want that some people want that i don't know why but there are people who want that um i there is a lot of self-idolization and yeah. ego uh egocentric actions within the spiritual community yes. and a lot of that is based on putting labels on yourself again to seem as to differentiate yourself at in this hierarchy, this invisible ass hierarchy. Yes. Um, and so it could be anything from Reiki master to vegan, you know, they, everybody attaches their name to these labels to seem important. Yes. But they are the same person that they were in regular life. All they did was switch up belief systems. And so there's still, there's zero evolution going on. Right. They just switched costumes. Right. So they're still the same person and energy when they get into the spiritual realm. And so we have to really look at our leaders and see who's actually evolving who's actually learning lessons right. um, and who's just remaining the same, the same in, in a egoic, I'm, I'm the shit. And if you don't follow me, you're not the shit kind of attitude. Um, when you, and I'm sorry to say most of these individuals get caught up when they go with who is most popular. I've seen it. Those, those usually aren't, those who are the strongest individuals in the work that they do. Um, and so when you just follow the popularity and you're not actually listening to the messages that they teach and all of this, that's when you get that false idol syndrome. Um, yeah. And you're like, well, how could he? Well, he's been this way the entire fucking time, but you ignored it. 
that meme that says sometimes those red flags turn into uh, six flags when you really feel it. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. Like <laughs> you be seeing shit, and you just ignored it because you was part of the in crowd. And when it no longer benefited, when you no longer benefited that person, they got rid of you. So now you see them for who they are when they've literally been that person the entire fucking time. So That's I think true. we should just get better at our intuitive knowing um, and stop transposing a lot of our humanness into our spiritual walk. Um, I'm not saying negate your humanness because that's all we are, but a lot of us are approaching this evolution thing in a very egoic manner. And it's not about the evolution. It's more about proving to people that you're better than them. Mm. And so mm. in that you will never be satisfied. Exactly. Because it will be always based on you proving to somebody else. So when people stop giving a fuck about what you're doing, when people are no longer paying attention, you're gonna do anything but get louder. Right? Everything you're just gonna get louder and more boisterous and more out there. Well, you could just live your fucking life and do what's best for you. Mm -hmm. and enjoy it and actually expand in consciousness for your personal reasons and not so much what to prove a point to somebody else i know that's right so yeah the authenticity of that yeah because this is just all for me i don't teach my daughter unless she wants to Mm -hmm. um my daughter is very powerful but if she chooses that to not want to tap into that or if she's not interested in metaphysics, I don't care. Because this this journey is for me. I don't care if my mom accepts it. My family, I've been weird my whole fucking life. So my family, this was no surprise to my family. Um, but there are people that be like, I don't know about all that stuff, Ty, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but they accept me for who I am. Mm-hmm. And you're either going to accept me or you don't. And I was like, I'd rather I'd rather be not accepted for who I am than be accepted for who I'm not. I know that's right. And const and I'm doing the constant labor of wearing a mask every time I'm around. Right. Nah, that's tiresome. I did it for corporate America a lot, and a lot of us do it for corporate America. Yes, that's we why do. we're so damn tired when we get off work. It takes a lot of work to perform for nine hours. With like only an hour lunch break, right? And, re- and gather yourself out. You put your refresh your makeup and go back out on stage. <laughs> That's exactly what it felt like. It, yeah, it's just it was horrible for me. Uh, me too. Especially being like one of not, like the only one in the office. It it was exhausting. Um, only female only minority. It, it was fucking exhausting. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> fucking exhausting. Yes. <laughs> I see that like, you know, the understanding that you have of, you know, what it really means for one to live from one's core authentically and, you know, be able to not only put yourself out there to the world, but take care of yourself. Because I mean, there's a thin line between people saying, if you have spiritual gifts, you shouldn't charge anything at all. Mm. You know, and them convincing people who have these gifts, know they are good at what they do, want to put themselves out there, but don't feel like they can charge because they're listening, you know, to the other people. And I'm just like, money is a part of life. There's something that we need. I don't know why people treat it like this. Oh my God, you're such a bad person because you want money. How dare you? Look, look, I have a shirt and I'm going to wear it next episode. I wanted to wear it for this one. It matches your, your covering, love. Oh, this? Yes. <laughs> I love it. I meant to tell you that before. But um, I want to break people out of this. I'm sick of spirituality being so polarized that it's like, oh my God, like I'm supposed to just live off air. Just be a breatharian. 
If that's what you went to, okay. But I'm just saying, I can't just thrive, achieve, live, you know, be able to take care of things if I don't charge. Yeah. So I feel like this. They look at our thing as a gift from God, which very rightfully it is. Mm Mm-hmm. Like I said, there are naturally gifted people at everything. I would venture to say Beyonce was made to be doing exactly what Beyonce is doing. Yes. Her gift. And I say this, if you can, if you can pay her to entertain you and not offer you anything else to your existence other than entertainment, then you can pay me to expand your consciousness, whereas you're manifesting everything you desire. Mm. That is her gifting, and you're willingly paying her because she entertains you. This is my gifting, and you don't want to pay me because it's not entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not entertaining, but that doesn't mean you don't need me. That doesn't mean that my what I do for you is any less. I got over I got over my pricing when I realized the results of my clients. They're landing a hundred thousand dollar job. You know, that's recurring hundred thousand dollars a year. Recurring. Yeah. You paid me one time. And off of my work, you're getting you can essentially get paid for the entirety of your staying at that position. Right. Make that make sense to where you only want to pay me a hundred dollars to do that. Yeah. Like, no, no. I have clients that I've helped manifest children for and that's priceless. Yes, it is. You know? And so it's just, if my gift is life changing and life altering to you, I am not going to devote my existence to the betterment of your life while I'm struggling to feed my child. I know that's right. And I don't even know why anybody would think of it as otherwise. Like, I feel like are they so self-righteous and caught up in the, I don't know, you're not even thinking about how this is impacting me, which then makes me look at those people funny because I'm like, if you can't understand another person's livelihood and the importance of it in general, not only just to them, but in general as a human being, then... I'm but gonna say nobody, nobody ever came to oracles and goddesses without an offering. Ever. Amen. Ever. They never did. Nope. They will always gather gold and fruits and all this other stuff to go to the oracle or the healer in order to pay for their service and energy. Yes. Because that's all money is, is energy. Yes. But when people are... Like in that, if I give it, I won't get back. But they're not thinking, and this runs into service space because we're not, and we can't promise a result. Right. And so they're like, I don't want to pay for nothing. I can't promise, or you can't promise, but they want your work though. They want your labor though. Yeah, they want your labor. And then the reason why we can't promise anything is I have no control. You have no control. No one has any control over whether that person actually listens to us. Right. And follows the steps. Like, that's important, too. You can't blame your missteps because you didn't follow the advice on and, and be like, oh, that didn't work. Yeah, if you didn't put the work in, too. I put in work and effort to learn how to do what I do mm-hmm. with such specificity that I can just command something to happen. You pay doctors to who went to school to pretty much do the same thing within their respective fields. You need a heart transplant. Guess what? You're paying that motherfucking doctor. You yeah. may not like it, but you pay him. Right. You know, you pay the dentist who spent years specializing his skill to be able to fix your fucking tooth and take, you know, do that root canal. You pay the hairstylist. You pay, you pay the car mechanic. Mm-hmm. You pay people to do what you can't do. And if you could do it, then you wouldn't need me. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And we got to pay people to do what they spent years, uh, whether it was money, whether it was energy, whether it was whatever. They spent years crafting and 
their ethic and technique to be able to service you, you got to pay for that. Yes, you do. I bitch every time I have to pay a locksmith, but guess what? I got to fucking pay him because I couldn't pop the fucking lock. Nope. If I could, I wouldn't have had to call him. Yep. So that's what I got to pay his ass. Like, I don't pay for things I can't do myself. That's why I'm always trying stuff. But hey, that don't mean I'm going to be good, but I'm going to pay the person to do it when I can't do it. Right. When you want it done right, you pay it. I tell people, go, like, there are a million and one people that do, well, <laughs> I'm lying, there ain't too many people that do what I do, but there's a million and one people in the manifestation field, right? And, um, and all these psychics out there, many and very, like, a myriad of prices go, go to them, right? But you want me because of what I'm capable of doing because they can't do what I do, right? So you got to pay me. Hermes ain't looking like you got coach money. <laughs> Let me see if I can get you this Hermes bag with this coach money. <laughs> no, you're either going to come with Hermes money to get this bag or you're not getting it. Facts. But guess what? They, they rocking Hermes and Gucci and Louis and all that other shit. And they don't go in there talking about y'all got a discount on this belt. They go in there and they pay full price for that fucking Gucci belt. People yep. pay for what they, people pay for what they desire for what they want and where they put interest in, okay. what they have priority in. And I tell people all the time, when you don't want to pay me, just say you don't value my services because that's literally all it is. Yeah. It's literally all it is. Um, and that's not, it's not a diss. That's not like anything against it. It's just what it is. Right. You hold value and what it is I provide, thus you don't want to pay me. And that's okay. But just admit that that's what it is. Right. Because if you, had, if you had $5,000 and you wanted that Chanel purse, you would have bought it. Because that's what you wanted. That was your priority in the moment. Um, and so I, I also have learned to not take it personally. That's a good point. Since it just basically comes down to what it is. Yeah. And it just, we have to start instituting boundaries where we're refusing to discount our services. I don't do discounts. They people already know when Ty Siren is doing anything, it's some coinage involved for the most part. <laughs> like, there's coinage. But also when I say, hey, it's free, people will be like, she'll never do free shit. That's true. And move them into action. Yeah. Um, because I'm not here to perform for you. I'm here to fucking do work. This is my mission. This is my purpose. I'm not a fucking parlor trick. Right. So I'm not going to just fucking show up and do tricks for you for your enjoyment and entertainment. Are we getting to work or no? And so that also takes a shift in our own perception of who we are and the power of who you are. If you're going to put yourself in that whole lump of festival um, parlor type psychics and shit, then that's what the energy that you're going to attract. They're going to yes. want you to do tricks, you know, they want you to do a little something strange for a little piece of change, you know, and that's the energy you're going to do. And because that's the energy that you're embodying, when you continue to say, no, that's not what I am. No, I don't do that. Right. No, I don't do that what's going to happen is you're going to stop attracting the people that want that. People come to me for transformation. When they want a reading is to be transformative. It's not so, Ooh, I'm bored today. Let's do something fun. We're going to go get a psychic reading. I'm right. not that. I'm right. not that like it. Um, but there are people who are, and they like that aspect of it, you know, but if that ain't you, then move and show up in the energy of who you are. I, and I tell people, there's going to be people cheaper than you. And there's going to be people more expensive. As much as people think my rates are expensive, I have a mentor that charges almost five times as much as what I do. Wow. And people pay. Yeah. 
So like it, it people pay for what they want and where they place value. And if you want the result that I'm providing, then you need to pay the price for it. And I get to dictate what that price is. Yes, you sell your <laughs> like everybody else that they worth. Look, I don't know why people are angry at that because, I mean, look, you get to do the same thing. You're setting your price wherever you think you're worth. Don't begrudge that for the next person. Right. Right. If they start a business making cupcakes and they want to charge $10 or $12 a dozen or whatever, or $24 a dozen, they'll be mad if we like, mm, I can make cupcakes for $8. Okay, then bitch, go make some cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't even have, that, have to have that exchange. Like, just but when it, Yeah, but when it comes to us, it's just like, well, such and such charges. And I'll tell them quick, then go to them. <laughs> Because that who that is who is willing to do what you want for that amount of money. Align with it. Go ahead. But you can't say that you want white glove service but refuse to pay white glove money. Like that it just doesn't go hand in hand. No, not at all. It go hand in hand. Not at um, all. But it takes us valuing ourselves. Absolutely. A lot of us are prostitutes of our own gifting. So you could you could become an escort instead. They get paid a little bit more. Oh, you, um, you got to say that again. I just loved how you said that. I'm going to quote you. I'm going to put that in a meme. <laughs> A lot of us are prostitutes of our own gifting. We're willing to do whatever for whatever. And I'd rather be a high class escort um, than get paid. Damn, yes. Like, uh, like, if I am going to be giving away my energy and my power for something, I am going to relish and live in the luxuriousness that <laughs> it could provide me as well. Yes, ma'am. So, like, no, no. Nope. We don't have to martyr ourselves. We always think these spiritual people are martyrs. Yeah. They're not. Um, Martin Luther King, spiritual, he wasn't a martyr. They killed him. Um, but he wasn't a martyr. Uh, there are people who are born to be martyred, Mother Teresa, and but they guess what? If they live that life, they wouldn't resent its existence. You could say whether or not, how do I know if I'm a martyr or not? If you ask it, then you're not. <laughs> because you wouldn't be given a damn about living off the land. Right. You wouldn't be giving a damn about not being able to afford certain things. You wouldn't be lamenting about it. You would be okay in that existence. Right. So if you're not okay living hand to foot and foot to mouth, then I need you to make some shifts on how you stand in your power in this world and demand something different. Yes, ma'am. Because as long as you're charging $10, people will pay $10. Because that's all, that's what you're requesting. That's right. a limiting belief saying that you can't charge something for a service. And that's a limiting belief that you have that people, I'm not good enough to be able to charge X, Y, Z. That's right. literally what you're telling yourself. People aren't, people aren't going to pay for that. Sure they will. There are people on Goop right now paying a hundred and some odd dollars for a little kit with some fucking sage and Palo Santo in it. That is true. I have listen. Okay, Gwyneth Paltrow. So, like, people, your your people will pay your services. You're yes, not if they're resonant with you and see yeah. your value, they'll pay for your value. Yes, I don't appeal to everybody. You know. Um, I've had, you know, white women leave my, my containers, not because of a lot of the results or whatever. It's just how I show up doesn't resonate with them. And I don't alter to accommodate. 
Right. You she they won't get some of my references when I'm speaking and things like that. And so like they don't quite get it. And so they leave. And I'm cool with that. I hear you. You can't because, <laughs> you can't show up. Who I am, I didn't bait and, switch. and this this is the thing. We bait we try to bait and switch people, but we're gonna flip we're gonna fuck up when we do that. Yeah, you better just show up as you. Yeah. Because it's just crazy. You you put this air out there. People be like, you tell people when you're dating, like you're spiritual, like right up front. I say, yeah. Why? Like, 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 th- let's get this out the way real quick. You yeah, why wouldn't you? Bro, is witchcraft and all that. Stop fucking with me. It's in my dating profile. Yeah. Spiritual. You know, witchy. Da-da-da-da. If that scares you, leave me the fuck alone. Why isn't that the first step people would make? Like I don't get it. Like you, you put yourself out there as you are. So we, because that's not compromised as far as you're concerned. It's not something about yourself you can compromise. So exactly. why am I not? Why am I not going to say that from rip? You know, from jump. Like yeah? this is who I am. I smoke. So like yes, I smoke weed. Yeah, because why am I going to hide it? I need to. Right. So like. Now, am I gonna come around you smelling like weed? Oh, no, I don't do no. that. And but, I'm not all out and just yeah. everywhere with it. Yeah, but I do smoke, and that is a thing. So if that's, I curse, and <laughs> they be like that pretty mouth and da, 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 curse the fuck, bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that's and it's all confused because pe- this is people in general. They will they will consign themselves to saying this is what they want right Mm -hmm. and as soon as they get it they start to try to manipulate it yep and change it then baby i wasn't what you wanted because i ain't listen from jump i ain't never listened to the bitch ass (laughs) not not one time so why six months later it's a problem right like, no, I never did that. I had one guy, oh, you know, when I get with you, some of, if we become serious, those lingerie pictures on IG are going to have to stop. Then we might as well not even get serious, boo. Oh, <laughs> don't even go down this road, sir. Goodbye. I said, that is my brand, and you are not going to come in here and mess with my money. Bye. I know that is right. Bye. And even if it wasn't my brand. You liked it when you was trying to get with it. So now it's a problem. Now you insecure. No, no boo. No Not boo. at all. I'm for the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I get it. I get it. And too many people don't. The fact that that was <laughs> even a request proves that, like, seriously, I couldn't fix my lips to say that to somebody about anything that they had going on. I would just recognize, okay, if it bothers me that much, then I don't need it. I don't need it. And there's no hard feelings against the person, but you know, everybody doesn't operate on that level, unfortunately. Exactly. It's really messed up. But I wanted everybody to see too, um, her rolling trays. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness. I think this is so gorgeous. Look. <laughs> kind of Hey, look, you were putting it to use. Isn't that pretty? I love these things. So (laughs) I got to get me one. I'm going to make sure that I put in the comments where you guys can get that from. So we will make sure we have that information. I want to ask you real quick, too, because, you know, as we tape this, um, you know, we're still in the election and everything, and a lot of you know, energy is high and it's directed in certain places. And I am not one of those people who's giving that much of my energy. I only viewed it so I could look at the astrology and stuff. That's, that's the main reason. But other than that, we're in a season right now where it would behoove people to, I kind of feel like, you know, Scorpio season tells you you're going to have to deal with emotions and the oft hid ones or things that are going on inside. I think it's a good time for people to be questioning certain things within themselves. However, there's so much distraction going on right now. So much. 
with that distraction, I mean, yeah, I don't usually care. I go into myself naturally. It like, I don't really care what everybody else is doing, but I wanted to ask you in general, what do you think for the people who can't just snap themselves into themselves while there's so many different things going on to take your energy and your attention away from, you know, you, how can you center yourself? Okay. Kind of get to that um, point. First of all, is recognizing that the collective experience doesn't have to be your personal experience. Hmm. Um, and knowing that everything, and not to be a cliche, but when you're repetitively looking at things, Mm-hmm. you're ingesting the energy of it. And then that shifts your energy. I have, I told my clients to unplug um, until like January because it's just so much going on. And I told them unplug and get you some business focus. You got a lot of things to be focused on right now. Your family, mm-hmm. you know, how you show up, your health, you know, shift your focus. Um, because Yes, the results can change things, but you watching it doesn't alter the results. Not at all. (laughs) (laughs) What is set in motion is already in motion. Yes, ma'am. So you are giving energy to the emotional roller coaster ride of it when you can just wait for the result. Yes, we have to be able to navigate whatever political waters come from this anyway. So to me, it makes more sense for me to be giving myself the touch so Yeah, just start pouring into yourself the yeah. same energy so that when you do have to show up in it, you can show up in it. Because look, the result is going to be what the result is going to be. Yeah. And um, whatever result that is, you're going to have to learn to live in it. And you're watching it and you're giving it extreme energy isn't going to shift the result of it, but it will alter your day to day. Yes. So unplug. I, I, my go for my mom's and my mom and my stepdad, they like do this all day. And I said, do y'all realize how angry y'all are on every day? Mm. Like you're angry because he chooses to be an idiot and you're watching him be an idiot. Stop watching him. <laughs> like, what, like, he's going to continue to be an idiot whether you're watching him or not. Like, he's going to do idiotic shit. You watching him isn't going to stop him signing in idiotic fucking laws. No. Because like, unless you're actively in it trying to shift it, you're watching ain't doing nothing. You are seeing it in the to be passive. I'm not saying to go passive, but I am saying to protect your mental health. I've told people that for years. Like I I've been unplugged the last four years. I stopped. I I don't care what he's doing right now because he's gonna do it and we're gonna have to live with it. But yes. Cause I'm not out there campaigning against him. No. I'm not out there on the picket lines. I'm not out there and the special interest pulpits or nothing like I'm not doing that. So people, people don't get it. There's something very specific coming through from what you're saying too, which is our attention, we only get the amount per day that we get to give it to something. It's mm-hmm. your currency, okay? It, it's mm-hmm. your personal energetic currency. So you keep basically you know making it rain. <laughs> right. <laughs> stuff that triggers you and at the end of the day the result is going to be the same and then you're not prepared because you didn't make it rain on yourself energetically so that you would have a focus and a plan something different could be going on other than your obsession with that which you cannot control right i think people could learn from us who are chronically ill right Mm. As people who are chronically ill, we call spoonies when we say we have we'll wake up with a certain amount of spoons per day like some days I could wake up with 10 spoons and some days I wake up with two, which means I can't do as much that day because I don't have enough energetic capacity to do it. Right. Right. People need to recognize their fucking energetic capacity and be able to say no and to disengage 
when you're approaching your energetic capacity. Yes. Because when I go over my energetic capacity, I have seizures or be bedridden for, depends on what I did. If it's a lot of physical, I could be like bedridden for like two days afterwards. Right. So it all depends. And so when you exceed your emotional capacity, there's always fallout. You're going to be angry. You're going to be short with your kids. Everything pisses you off. And, and a lot of this feels like uncontrollable. Right. And that's only because you're in overflow. You're yeah. overstimulated. You're over this. There is a thing of sensory processing. We have to process everything that we ingest. And there comes a point where your body is like, yeah, I'm done kind of, I don't want to process right now. Right, right. And that's where we get the anxiety. That's where we get the paranoia. That's where we get, you know, the palpitations and the jitters and, you know, all that other stuff. Because your body is refusing to process additional shit. Right. I had to learn that. I had to learn that because that's. I flooded my body with <laughs> processing, and then one day my body was like, "Yeah, we're not doing that no more, sis." <laughs> and I started having seizures, and that you know that was six years ago. Wow! It took thirty-two years to get my body to the point where it was just like, "Bitch, I know you tried it," <laughs> and then and then you know That's now we're best friends. That happened. <laughs> To me, like, I have fibroid tumors and endometriosis and suspected adenomyosis, which I have to deal with that, too. And people be like, it's just your period. It's just like, like, I don't, it's, it's just your period. And mind you, my fibroids are the least of my issues. They haven't grown or anything. They're not that big. But these Mm -hmm. other issues, I used to have to medicate myself. I set a timer medicate myself 3 a.m. so that by 6 a.m. I would be okay enough to take a shower and leave by 7. Right. I passed, I passed out on the way to work. I knew that morning that I shouldn't I, mm-hmm. I shouldn't go. Like this is this is too much. This is too much, but then I'm like I don't want to have to deal with the hassle of calling out a also a lot of them. guilt that comes along with oh, that. Yes. Too. Yes. I'm going to leave the team short then I'm going to have to hear my manager mouth. Like every yeah. conceivable thing go go against my body and I passed out on the way to work and woke up. But the thing is, people are also think you're lazy. Mm-hmm. You know, they are like, I was like, I'm not lazy. I have chronic fatigue. Like, <laughs> lazy be damned, my body don't want to do it. Exactly. It has nothing to do with my will. And I don't think people separated that well. And that's when, that was 2016. And I'm that's, 2014. So yeah, that those years were really fucking transformative around that time. Mm-hmm. If you and your heart, I bet you that was around the time that you devoted yourself to your spirituality too. You, yes, it was very much so, fully. Yeah, it, I sl- like it took a year for me to really be like, nah totally spiritual. I started another business too, because I figured I'm going to use my skills. I do stuff for people that they don't have time to do, usually small business owners, busy musicians, stuff like that. So I started a virtual personal assistant company, but then there was something knocking like, ma'am, your word. A lot of us got activated. A yeah. Lot of got activated around that same time. It's a beautiful time. I'm grateful for it. It was, it is, but a lot of us got them Sparta kicks, man. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, you go willingly because nobody really knew about the spiritual revelations and all that. You know, we yeah. didn't come willingly. We got fucking kicked in our neck down yeah. the hole, and it was like, all right, now fly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I peed myself, it feels like, energetically, when it was just, oh shit, I'm off the cliff, I'm soaring, oh my, I've got, oh, okay, all right, here we go. It's- it, it, took, it took me a minute, and um, yeah, when we, when we commit ourselves, the, it, it's the difference between someone on a general, like a spiritual journey, mm-hmm. and one of the angels that were put here for a mission being activated Mm. 
once I decided that I was going to go spiritual, that activated me. I have no choice in my mission anymore. Right. I'm not someone that's choosing this spiritual journey and it's just all love and light and da da da. No. I have a sole purpose. And should I deviate, I will get checked. Right? Right. So there are people that get intermixed, and this isn't to say anybody's better than anybody, right? But there are people here with soul missions that get lumped in among the people who are just want to experience spirituality and this is the experience they're choosing. Gotcha. My whole existence led me here. Like, this isn't one day, ooh, I'm going to be this spiritual person. <laughs> I'm going to live in the woods and it's going to be awesome. I, this, my spirituality is not an aesthetic. <laughs> right. And so it's my entirety and my being. And there are some people where this, the spirituality is more aesthetic. When it ain't working for them no more, they're going to ditch it. Right. You know how many times I quit over the last six years? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, but I have no choice. Right. Right. Like this is what I was supposed to be doing. I have no choice. So here I am. Yes. Oprah was meant to be doing what she's doing. Beyonce was meant to be doing what she's doing. You know, there are people put here for a certain purpose. Yeah. The kitchen. Um, so there are people put here for a sole purpose and a sole mission. And it's hard because we, once we say yes, we can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then people look at it it's like, well, just do something else. It doesn't no, work. No, no. I, I always I snap back know. right to it. Because, because I'm, they won't allow it. I'm the manifestation maven. And uh, I was like, I'm going to go back to work because I was a military intelligence strategist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where there were times when I was late in my business and like everything was a struggle. And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go back because um, I know uh, how much money I'm worth back mm -hmm. in. And they was like, you could try and you're going to get sick. I went back to work. I want to say like six to eight months after my seizure started, because I started working with a therapist and an occupational therapist and all this mm -hmm. to get me to function and be able to walk again and talk again. And so when everything felt kind of normal, when I was walking unassisted and stuff again, I was like, I'm going to go back to work. I got sick, girl. Hmm. Like it is, it was so crazy. It was so weird. So again, there are people who want to experience spirituality and there are people whose mission it is to show up in this energy. Um, and we experience everything differently. Yes. So. Yes. You very can't much. just not do it. <laughs> when you're called to the work, you actually got to do the work. You have to go get with it. It will find you again and again and again when you try to lose it. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It is, Absolutely. It's it your job. Back. Yes. It's so yes. beautiful, though, when you think of it that way. I, I really like, you know, how you're putting things. And they're touching on so much that's going on in the collective. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like... Um, you're getting the opportunity at this time. I think in general, all people are with the influence of like Scorpio season, mm -hmm. realize these deeper inner truths because Scorpio doesn't really care if what it finds is good or bad. It's just right. like, what is at the heart of this? I need to know what I am dealing with. You know, mm -hmm. some things come down to very simple precepts and concepts like you, you can reduce everything down to a lowest common denominator and that's how you better get in the flow of things. And I love that. Cause I feel like that's the way that you explain 
and come mm-hmm. through. Like the, it's the reducing everything down. I feel that Virgo. <laughs> I feel that Virgo. The Virgo in me recognizes the Virgo in you. Because I'm not a sun sign Virgo, but I got Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn there. So, and I'm a sixth house sun, the house of Virgo. So I'm like, I resonate. When I see it, I'm like, I see it. Like, yes. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Look, you did, 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 and to be strategist, you are giving us Virgo keywords here, mom. Yes. Tell you, mama, you are. (laughs) So, no, that's an example I wanted to show just in walking um, energetically for people, astrologically, because it, that's what she's, listen, that's part of her gifts. She's going to use them. I tell people I am literally made for this. Like, with the Virgo and the Sagittarius. Yeah. um, Scorpio. Scorp Moon for the research and integration of like the shadows and the darks and the mysticism, the being a number eight life path number, yes. being a manifesting generator, yes. you know, like with an open sacred, like I was meant for this. Like yeah. I'm an engram with personality tests with, I literally, I'm the mediator. In yeah. Enneagram. So I'm like, I was made. Specifically to do what I do, to come in, see all that's happening, develop a plan of recourse. Mm-hmm. Fastest, most efficient, with the most, with the less casualties. I learned that in the military. Like, how can we get in and out, get our objective, and have the least casualties? Right. Show me that. And what if we do this, what will the enemy do? Like, that was my whole job. My mm. whole job was to, like, this is what they plan to do. My job was to think of what the enemy would do. Right. So that made me, my little baby psychic ass that, that didn't know I was a psychic, really a really good fucking analyst. I was on point. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I had no fucking clue that it wasn't me. <laughs> I was on point though. Yeah. I was a broken ass analyst. <laughs> I love it. I love it. When you yeah. know you fit any way a person could, you know, measure any sort of, okay, all right, well, this energy is good for this and that's good for that. You know you fit it and you walk it. <sighs> it's a beautiful feeling, even through the ups and downs of all of it. And I think that people can learn a lot from the things that you talked about today. You know, having someone to go to as a clear guide, you know, holding yourself accountable being able to dissect things. Everybody doesn't necessarily, everybody got Virgo energy somewhere in their chart. People get mad at me when I say this, but you got the energy of all 12 signs, just in little, the amounts are different. So, you know, if you don't have a lot of Virgo energy like you, you are influential to people like that. That's filling the Virgo cup. Like, let's let's pour this energy and the sad energy, the teacher, the guru, you know, you're instructing people and showing them away. You know, you're not wasting your skills. And then people will wonder why they don't feel fulfilled. It's because they're not tapped into themselves to know how they're supposed to be presenting themselves to the world. It's a, it's really a feeling. All of it is when you're in alignment with it, you know, if it matches you. So you've, you know, you give people an opportunity to be able to get from you that which it's kind of hard for them to find on their own but it's not you doing the work for them you're just presenting them with their realities yeah allowing them their sacred expression Mm. without judgment because i don't care yeah (laughs) and and that's why a lot of i a lot of my clients fall on the queer spectrum a lot of my clients fall on the black sheep spectrum Mm -hmm. and all of this because i don't care like i i don't care what you want this is a safe space it you know my my objective is to just help you get what it is that you desire so long as it falls within you know the moral code of who i perceive as god like, yeah I'm not, allowed I gotcha. to, I'm not gonna give my energy to do fuck shit yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but if we're talking about your personal healing and happiness and you say you want to be a kept woman 
it ain't my job to tell you you should aspire for more. It's no. my job to help you get it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care. <laughs> you know? Then that's the higher vibration of Virgo energy, too. And I, I think that's beautiful. I have to, like, really say something about that because it gets slack for being nitpicky and critical and everything. But at the end of the day, one can do that from a stance of superiority and Mm. that just be the pure motivating reason they're even criticizing. Or one is like, look, this is just what the fuck it is. Like. I had a friend, I had a client tell me the other day, do you get tired of people telling you you're right? (laughs) Absolutely. The fuck no. (laughs) I said, y'all would be better for it to just listen. Y'all pay me to tell you things. Like, (laughs) you pay me to work in my divine energy. Yes. Like, Virgos, we research so much that even if that's not our area of expertise, we know a little bit. Right. About a lot. Yes. Why? Why do you know how to fix this? I don't know. One day it came to mind. So I looked it up. Yeah. It was like that I said, I don't know. I gotta know. There's nothing in me that where that image could pop in my mind that says, What do sea turtles eat? And then me not figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't compute. I have to figure it out. And so that serves a lot of people because I've exper- either experienced a lot of things, I've read a lot. And so I can give you what you need in that moment. And we think a million miles, we think in link trees. Yeah. We yeah. see things that other people don't see. And I make it easier for you. People that really get caught in their head, I'd be like, oh, so this is what you mean. And they're like, uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> and so Virgo energy is not a bad energy to have. People just don't like to be correct. Exactly. That's what it boils down to. (laughs) I don't, and I won't tell people stuff if I'm genuinely not trying to help you. Right. Unless you attack me because my Mars is in Virgo and it's at zero degrees, in which case, like, I don't usually go looking for people. So if you come over here. My Mercury's in Virgo. So uh, you get it. I will sing for you, but if you come, (laughs) you don't know what you're going to get. Sayonara, yo. Yes. Yes. That's how it is. So, like, you know, the truth is brisk sometimes or harsh, but listen, if you can handle it, well, you'll be all the better for it. I think that's a beautiful thing and a good example of Virgo energy at its highest, being (laughs) of service and it really coming from a place of wanting to to take care of. Because you realize, you you know how funny it is to realize when people around you, this might have happened to you when you were younger. You're like, you how wait, how did you get from here to here? Because like you said, it's like link trees. Like right. your thought process, especially with your Mercury there too. So, mm-hmm. you know, you listen to people like weave stuff together or plan stuff or stuff is not connecting and it's just like stop. I have had that happen and have not met harm and didn't even realize I hurt the person's feelings. Right. It was this kid who was like rapping. And he had aspirations to rap, but the rhythm, I was like, stop. Like, right. And this immediately just trying to help you fix the problem. It's not like, stop. Oh my God, I feel like embarrassing you right now. Or, you know, you're going to point out anything to anybody that isn't from a place of help, helping them get what they want. What I learned was, especially when it comes to like my like clients you're gonna get all this virgo because that's what you're paying for but um when it comes to like friends and things like that is Mm -hmm. are you venting or do you want my assistance Hmm. so that's a different those are two totally different energies understandable wants to get in on it right yeah wants to help you figure this out but are you just venting or do you actually want my assistance because then that determines how i show up in this conversation right um, because sometimes they don't really want help. They just want to vent. They talk That's about true. It. That's true. And I, I've learned that. And that's cool. But I'm only going to, as of also as a Virgo, I'm only going to listen to you vent about a thing. 
one so or two. Much. Yeah. <laughs> There's a yeah. limit. We hate repetitive, repetitive shit. Yeah. I like to repeat myself. I hate it too. You repeat yourself. I don't want to hear you bitching about something that has a resolution. You yeah. just don't want to do it. And so I'm not going to listen to you bitch about that for 80 not minutes. Not at all. Not at all. No, no. I hear you. That's that's a waste of time. And Virgo has already determined. <laughs> that's the longest way to go. No, 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 no. We we going down. And that happens in milliseconds. And yes, happens. without like. And I know what you're. Listen, I know what the Mercury and Virgo. T- so you got to look at it like this. You know, your sun. The the way you view life is through a Virgo lens anyway, with your sun sign there. But then when your Mercury there, the way that you're processing things, that's really like. That's mm-hmm. a blessed thing to have for what you're doing, which only is real succinct. Is real succinct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just it's not a. I mean, it it literally is a whole bunch of this, but like you process it so fast. Right. It's very dissecting exactly to where it needs to be. The lowest common denominator, the, the thing that brings it all together. Okay, what's the point? Right. Yeah, and then how do we get to the next place? So. Listen, you are definitely walking the path that you were supposed to be and embracing it and being unapologetic about it, which is so inspiring because like you're talking and I'm like, oh my God, you're talking to me, some of my friends and stuff. I know that they're going through like all, everything that came through just really needed to, um, especially when it comes to understanding our connectedness, but disconnectedness at the same time from things. Like you said, draw, pull yourself back. It's a lot going on right now. That doesn't mean you don't have to know nothing, but you don't have to fight with people about politics <laughs> on Facebook. Let's, let's pour our energy somewhere else. So it, I, I thank you for sharing that the way that you did. Can you let everybody know where to find you? Um, I am Siren Kincaid. Um, you can look me up at sirenkincaid.com. Um, universe is my sugar daddy.com. They all lead to the same place. Um, Siren Kincaid, Mr. Siren Kincaid on Facebook, Siren Kincaid on IG. Um, so I'm Siren Kincaid everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. I will make sure that I have links to everywhere she can be found. Thank you for chatting and chilling with me. I know this energy has been heavy, but I feel like that was very much needed conversation. I appreciate you so much. No, it's, it's actually not that bad. But, you know, I come in as a, a block removal. Yeah. So, like. The way my brain works, I think of how everybody is all over. The, like, I know where I am, and that's in the space of calm. Mm -hmm. And trying to, you know, pretty much pull together what I need to for myself and to take care of my life. But what drives me crazy sometimes and I got to pull back from is, you know, oh, I can see where this person could kind of understand how to calm down a little bit. Okay, that person is going to be more like the way my brain works. Like when I see how people are reacting to things, it's making me deduce how far away they are from me which is interesting because I see that happening with a lot of people that I know. You're like, whoa, I can see how the disconnect goes. And that drives me crazy because I can't help but do it with every person (laughs) I interact with. And then it's like, oh, like then I'm just taking in all this. And and I'm like, look, I don't even want to do that. I need to. Just don't unplug. Yeah. Business. Go start something new. Have fun. Binge watch stuff. Start a craft. Start a hobby. Clean. Do something other than play video games like it's okay yes okay chillax do something else that's very sage advice because it ain't gonna change based on your viewing and being an audience of it and stressing yourself out or you know anything for that matter that is touching on people right now and it's throwing them off they square right so it makes a lot of sense it really, really does. I thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I, I hope to see you again. You have an open invitation. Huh? Okay. You have, a, you have an open invitation. Please let everybody know one of the things that you will be involved in that's upcoming in case they would like to be a part of it. 
I have my Sex Magic class, Pleasure 360, um, that is now open. Um, that can be found at 360pleasure.com. It is a one-day master class that I will be um, hosting. And you can also find that on like my pages when you right. see me. And so that is coming up. I have some Black Friday stuff coming up for integration of your soul energy um, for manifestation. I have um, things like that coming up if that is what you're all, like what you're looking for if you're looking for transformation mm -hmm. um, and walking in your authentic truth to manifest the life you're afraid to admit you desire. That is me. Um, so I have some things launching for that. And if you're like, I just need guidance on Black Friday, I am launching a guidance tier as well, where you, all you get is the collective readings. Okay. Manifestation for the month. And that's it. Like, that's bare bones. Like, I'm going to kind of do my own thing, but I kind of want to know where to focus. Gotcha. So I have that launching. So Black Friday, that a lot of those are launching, but Pleasure 360 is available right now. Cart closes on the 13th. Um, because it comes with a box of goodies the uh -huh. and then the ritual. So How good. let me listen. I love your goodies. And it's on December 13th, the night before the eclipse. So like, it's going to be the energy for, uh, the energy for manifestation is going to be so magnificent. Mm -hmm. Um, just, you want to be there if you can. Y'all heard it here first. I will also link directly to that in the com well, in the description. Thank you for coming on. I hope to see you back soon. I want to thank everybody for listening, for chatting and chilling with us. We just kind of talk about some things the spirit, I guess, needed out there. Thank you for being the conduit for that. I really appreciate you so much. You're so welcome. I appreciate the invite. Oh, no problem. Everybody, we'll see you on the flip side. The preceding segment was recorded on November 6th, 2020.